Sensitive and Cody, and today I'd like to show you how a scribble might unlock your inner artist. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. And we are coming to you as part of the big art quest about face. This is an indeterminately long <laughs> Uh, art quest that's going on about portraiture and faces and we're just working on getting our art back on our groove on in a really relaxed fun way and this week's quest is the scribble and the dribble mm -hmm. so first we're going to start with the scribble before we get into the dribble if you are in the big art quest group or on our website theartsherpa.com you will notice that there's reference photos there's pictures there's mini quests those are little adventures you can do on your own to just sort of help you along your art journey so you can have more fun with this. I specifically created this because we've been doing some very complicated faces. Mm -hmm. And also because sometimes looking at abstract abstract work, abstracted, abstracted work, helps us figure out like what makes a face a face. Right. So I really like the scribble for this. And many of you have mentioned that you're feeling a bit of the perfectionism. Mm, yeah. Are we struggling with that? A bit of the perfectionism, a little bit it's got to be perfect or it has no value? Thank goodness life isn't like that. Yeah. Ooh, boy, we'd all just be gone, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> like, like nobody left <laughs> at all. So luckily art in life is not about perfectionism. That's just something that kind of haunts us like ghosts. And we're going to maybe, hopefully, for many of you, let go of some of that during our scribble. I have 70-pound uh, basic drawing paper here. And I have over here, um, I've indulged in an 8B pencil, but mostly because I just grabbed it from the jar. Here's our good 2B pencil. A brush if I feel like blending some sharpeners, cup of coffee. Mm. Now, today's project we're going to do from our Believe face. If you guys have been through the first quest and done your Believe face, then you kind of know how that's drawn in. And we're going to use that as the bones to do our scribble face. You are welcome to use any of the references um, that you need for shadowing. And, of course, we'll put this up on the website. Yes. So let's start putting in our Believe face. So our Believe face starts out with our happy little oval, right? Mm-hmm. We like our oval. It helps us see things. I really admire artists. Like, there's artists that come in, uh, really will just drop an oval like mm -hmm. it's nothing. That is not my experience. I think uh, we're going to be looking at a bunch of abstracted stuff. So, many styles of abstraction, not just this one. So, if we haven't covered your favorite style of abstraction, don't worry. I'm going to bisect the face in half. All of my lines are going to be fairly light, even though I'm going to be scribbling over it. I'm going to come down just a little bit below halfway and put my little eye line in. Like you do. Then divide this in half again and put my nose line in. Like you do. And a half again, somewhere in here. I'm going to do some lips. Now these are all very adjustable adjustable things. I'm going to not do our whole nose project. I'm going to just kind of sketch in our circle and maybe our two side circles, mm -hmm. right? Then I'm going to sketch in maybe my first, my little ball, right, that I like to do on my lip. And I'll bring my little lip out that far at least. There's a lot of ways to do that. You can, some people like to do the two balls. I think that's okay, too. I got asked that. Was that okay? Of course that's okay. Mm -hmm. Artists don't solve problems one way. And so if you work with a lot of different art teachers, you'll get a lot of really cool different solutions. Be good with it. Be like, I have so many art tools, I can do anything. You know? So I'm just rounding out the little lower lip here. And once I know where that is, I know I'm going to have at least an eyes width apart here. I'm not going to draw in the whole eye. I'm just going to draw in my almond shape that is the eye because I'm scribbling. Ah. I don't need to be very particular here. You don't, you don't need all of the I detail. I just need to know generally where things are, right? And then I can line up, right? Like my nostrils were to line up here. Or inner eye, either one is fine. You can even do corner of the mouth. You just want your eyebrows to not be too close together. Pluck them. <laughs> just a little bit of a line. And again, if you've been really struggling with eyebrows, don't worry about it. This is just to give you some spatial zones. Now, I do think it's nice 
to maybe imply some hair. And what I'm going to suggest is, you know, have some fun with this, right? Whatever you're going to be doing with hair, try to have some fun with it. So I'm going to make some crazy sort of lines that I will be sketching. And I might possibly pull a neck down here. Who knows how much I'm going to be getting into it. Not that much. This is going to help prep us for what we're going to be doing tomorrow with our string gel. I need a sip of coffee. How you guys doing? Oh my gosh, we have such a wonderful crowd of people out here today. I can't believe oh, we have a stream. Oh my god, we've been we have... looking everywhere for a stream. We Somewhere have... a live stream to connect our art, to go out into the world and share creativity. It's it's pretty wonderful. I mean, from Brisbane to Greece to Oregon, wow. all over. It's like we have wow. the crew here today. And they're ready. They're they're believing in the face. So and and we're not going to be stressed, right? Like our number one rule for this particular all the new live casts is don't panic. Mm -hmm. We re-upload things, and all you have to do is find the Big Art Quest page for it, and whatever good link there is, it will be there. So you'll never be shut out. You don't got to be like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You just got to go to the Big Art Quest. Do we and have that lower banner? We oh yeah, we do. We have it right here. And I have to say that today, I, I love seeing uh, all the. All the folks from from all over the world in here because we have such beautiful names that come in yeah. from just everywhere. I mean, and and it's it's wonderful. So thank you guys for joining us here. We really we, appreciate I, it. That's actually really cool. I get to come back. So on YouTube, I can't read the comments. Yeah, that's but true. on Facebook, I get to come back and see what people said, which and is all the really hearts. fun. Uh, yeah, one of the great things about Facebook for me is I get to see all the hearts. Mm -hmm. So that, like, you know, I saw Summer was pouring in lots of love earlier. Oh, Summer, thank you so much. So, and uh, and Jessica right now is pouring a bunch in. So it's it's wonderful. I get to see all of them. I get to see your That's little faces pop up. That's the good feature that they snarf from Periscope. Yeah, so, they full on snarfed it, but I say yay. <laughs> and, and so I get to see the faces of my friends because yeah. I can't necessarily keep up with the chat mm -hmm. as much, but I can definitely see all the faces pop up. So it's nice when I see. You know, everybody's everybody I know in there. So thank you guys. It's lovely to have you with us. I like that. I'm glad that you guys are here. It really actually always just brings a lot of joy to me. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to just sit there. I'm like, all right, I've got my face. You guys saw the examples of the faces that I did from different uh, photographs. And I made sure that you guys had the reference photos. Um, got so much work always going on in the sketchbook. So like I was just being goofy, right? When mm -hmm. scribbling. You were, you were so doing you can, some test scribbles? Yeah, I did some test scribbles. You could be pretty representational, you know, on anything that you're doing. And sometimes what happens is the scribbles help you see the important things of people's features, which is the shadows along their eye line and their, their nasal line and their mouth and their hairline, right? And mm -hmm. the favorite one I did during that whole drawing session, I had a couple I didn't like. That happens. But my favorite one was her. Oh, that turned out great. Yeah, she was really delightful, and, you know, we have her reference photo. Oh, yep. So you guys can go scribble away. You make you your own. You can take away from her what was important to you, you know. And then we even talked about some of my favorite artists oh, yeah, and my that. very favorite current book right now that's out on the market. So, you know, we've been... We were super organized Sneak today. peek. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky peeky. Something we were working on this morning. <laughs> For y'all, as requested... All right, we're back to her. Don't tell anyone you saw that. All right, so we're going to start putting this in. And I think something that's important to think about in faces, when we're looking through a rainy window, when we're looking in the distance, we don't really see the features in Chris. What we see is the shadows and their relationship to each other in a hairline. Mm -hmm. And that's how we actually really recognize people. So I've given us this light sketch, right, just as an anchor, just as a security. And I'm going to just start... Scribbling, scribbling happily along. I'm, I'm going to keep my camera. I'm going to do my upper lip dark. That's going to be in shadow, so that's going to be very, very now, if you'll dark. Stay, if you'll stay here on the lips and let me know when you're going to wander around, that and way I'm, I'm going to because I'm going to bring the camera in real tight, and I want to I want to stay on what. Okay, you're doing. I'm going to be here at the mouth. I'm just cool. sort of I'm way back. No, you know how normally I'm like right here, right now. Yeah. I'm way back in my pencil. Yeah, I see. I'm just like, hey, how loose can I be? When I do this, especially if you're, you know, initially start from your belief face, you can be like kind of comfortable. I'm going to go ahead and put my shadows in, right? Um, but you can work from photographs, and what you'll find is after about three or four scribbles, you start to see the faces better. What's important about them? Yeah. What happens is, is that your left brain 
does not think this is a serious bit of business and gives up real fast having an opinion, which is the best ah. thing ever. Right? We always want our left brain to just stop weighing in. Yeah. You know? So I'm going to just... I'm going to actually put my eyes in shadow. I'm probably going <laughs> to cast a shadow pretty hard on half of my face. So the reason why we today. have RoboCam is because, you know... I forgot to tell you where you I was going, You forgot to I? tell me. And so RoboCam tries to keep up, but RoboCam sometimes... You know... So I'm going to start shading in and scribbling in the nasal fold. And the thing is, the other thing that teaches you is that it's not about a single line. It's about the weight and value of the total piece. Now, not for all of you guys. For some of you guys, this is not going to be a fun day. <laughs> right? But for some of you that have been really stuck, you know, in just having it all be so tight and so controlled, you're going to be like, you know... Man, it was probably not that important. Yeah. Because at the end of this, you're going to be able to totally tell, even though it's abstractly, that this is, after all, a face. And that's really, at the end of the day, what's important is that we need to know that she has this, like, face. Another thing I like to do when I'm doing this is not pick up my pencil often. Um, some people actually make a game of this. It's a very fun game where they do a portrait and they never pick their pencil up one time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a very good game. Not a good game when there's a grade involved. And I kind of really wish sometimes, like in art school, we would not, you know, mix up our games with grades because I'm like, dude, I want to have fun. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to be enjoying this. Now I'm all stressed because it's very, I like my grades. You know, and that's what really mattered to me at that time was getting those grades in. You know, but you can start thinking about the structure of the nose this way. You're just like, oh man, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to... Notice how I'm just not picking up my pencil? Yeah. Fun stuff for me. Is it fun stuff for you? I don't know. Hopefully. You know, and you're going to start to see that there are certain things that are super important when we're talking about the face and some things that are not that important when we're talking about the face this is really really interesting how it sort of develops as you just sort yeah. of draw on it yeah it just it's is gonna happen no matter what I do She's, so you guys got really excited and we're like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scribble already. Well, there's a lot of people who are ready to scribble with us. They're like, oh, I like this. Well, how many people were told, uh, I was talking to our community manager and she had been told at one point that scribbling wasn't really arting. Hmm. That's sort of funny, isn't it? Considering there's some artists whose entire fine art careers are based on the scribble. Gigantic scribbles. This also breaks you of the persistent need to erase mm -hmm. right erasing is not good for your art to do a little bit of it is okay but you can become really dependent on the eraser and starting to move away from that experience can really help you just not even that worried because she's gonna get there i'm gonna i'm gonna get to know her as I go, she'll happen. She'll find herself. I don't know who she'll be or why she'll be, but she'll find herself and she will be. Interesting thing you might not know is the nasal folds generally start up there at the corner of the top of the nostril. So if you're going to talk about that, that's where you discuss it a little bit. And the depth of that determines the age of the subject. Wow, that's really interesting. I really like to do very old oh, faces. That's sort of like my jam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you. I think. I. I think I know why you like doing old faces. You want to. You want to tell them why you like doing old faces. I want to hear why I like old faces from you. I think you like old faces because they have more interesting things to do. They do. And There's so much more story in a really old face. 
Yeah, you get the, little, the wrinkly bits and the little spotted bits and, yeah, you know. You know how I hate, like, for my art materials to make me work. Well, the nice thing about an old face is if I'm doing a young beauty face, wow, it's really hard to tell the rest of her story. So now this, that brings a good question. You were saying you don't like to, to do, you, let, you want your art materials to do the work for you. Yeah. So there one, there's a lot of questions about how much pressure you should be applying with your pencil. So um, here's the ranges of pressure. So it would be a light pressure. Hold on, hold on. Hold okay, on, hold I'm going to come on. up in the upper corner. And I'm going there. Demo the demo. range of pencil pressure. Okay. Hit me. Okay, so up here I have a very light pressure. It's The pencil's touching the paper, it's catching, but it's leaving very little lead, right? Okay. Let's say this is a mid-grade pressure. I'm connecting, I can feel. So when I'm feeling it, I can feel the paper in my hand, through the pencil in my hand. Yeah. My hand isn't straining, my body isn't straining, and I can very easily lighten up from that spot and lighten and go darker. Right. So this is very hard. I almost lose, when I'm going very hard, I lose the paper feel. When, mm. I'm, when I'm at my perfect mid-range, I feel all the paper and everything. I feel very like, like Jordi LaForge. <laughs> now, at, at that pressure... But this dark pressure, and I'm pressing in, it's going very dark, I almost don't feel the paper in the same... There's something similar in driving, I think. Yeah, now, so at the I'm same... I'm going to her an ear just because it's just bugging me. At the same pressure levels, a softer pencil will put down more lead. Yes, the softer your pencil is... Or graphite. Right, so I have an 8 here, Oop. and I'm going to come up here. This is my softest pressure, right? And look how beautifully... I, I've been talking this in the drawings, like, it's not hard to do a light shade with a soft pencil. This pencil does all the work. All the work. I don't do any of the work. Go dark. Look how dark. Very quickly. Very quickly. And at, at almost my mid. Yeah. At almost my mid. I'm opting for a 2B because it's not that far off of a school pencil. So if all you have right now is some school pencils, you won't be getting results so different from mine. So you won't be tripped out by the material. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, let's color that in. Now, could you, still... could you scribble with ink? Well, and we're going to. to yeah, you can scribble with ink. Tomorrow we're going to look at scribbling with paints. You know, we're going to use a product called String Gel. Mm -hmm. And I love String Gel. If you can't get String Gel, of course, Tar Gel will work. I'm going to do some tests, to see, you know, just to see if for the purposes of whatever, you can just thin some paint and still get a decent drizzle. Mm -hmm. In the same way you can th sometimes thin paint and still get a decent pour. So we'll see. You know, but regardless, you can do this with a pen. Paint pen. Right? She's coming in, isn't she? Oh, yeah. So what are you thinking about there? Just just putting in maybe a more focused eye. Just pressing in more, scribbling more. All right, because it's just really, this is about her eye, right? Just thinking about eyes more. That's so clear. So what I'm doing is I'm defining in dark pencil maybe some. The shape of her eye. Wow. Now this is a, is this a charcoal pencil? Is this this a is just pencil? a graphite pencil. This is a Faber-Castell. It, this, the ninth, this is their jumbo of the 9000 series. It's a 2B. I, I generally, when I'm arting, go with at least um, this level of pencil because the leads don't break as much. Right. And I really hate it when my leads break. And we keep calling them leads, but I think it's a graphite. It's graphite, yeah. I think that's just a, a habit of grade school phenomenon. Yeah. You can just see as I'm going. Yeah. Now, I have seen people, and, and uh, Wallace was just uh, co uh, commenting on this. I've seen people <coughs> make those really long um, you know, graphite tips where they oh, sharpen yeah, it Oh, yeah, where they sharpen it like they're in art school. Now, what is that about? That is about, okay, so what it is is, <laughs> I get to sippy sippy if I get to explain the joys of this at art school. 
So they take you in a little room and they have a little table and they pile things on it at five in the morning <laughs> and they light it. <laughs> so you've got these pencils and you're supposed to stay there for the duration. Art classes are generally longer. And you're not going to break. You're not going to walk away. If you have a really groovy professor, sometimes you get music. And so you're supposed to just stand there and work. Well, at the rate you're working, sharpening your pencil is just not feasible. So you work the pencil leads out. If you have a quality piece, that, that's optimal. And you sit back on your pencil. And that way, the only thing you're doing in a fluid, unbroken string of concentration is looking at your subject. You almost don't look at the paper. It's crazy. So you're looking. I'm going I'm to I'm act it out for you. Right, and you're just back here working, 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 and you're trying to not erase, not lift. You're just, you're just pondering the pile of rags that your professor has left for you with a light. Sometimes gotcha. it's bolts. Well, some see, days it's bones. So that's, I did not. I swear one day, I swear a trash can was emptied out <laughs> <on the table. laughs> Like, she was just like, I'm out of ideas. Boom. <laughs> Art up now. <laughs> well, it's. A mid-morning thing i gotta do that's, okay <laughs> so i would have never expected that what that that's the reason why you would do it i thought i mean like so you so literally you just peel it back that much so that yeah as you're, you're just working, working the okay so what happens is you have a you have an ideal sweet spot of focus right right that happens in your creative brain very hard to teach and maintain that focus by the way Y'all have no idea. And with me heckling you, I imagine that's probably... Oh, it's just... <laughs> wow, it's like a new thing. It's like, a, you know how like there's that new thing where people box and play chess? Oh, yeah. It's like that for me. So anyways, <laughs> but ideally when you're in an art space, you know, you are just trying to see and be in that space only and process what you're thinking only. And so all disruptions are counterintuitive to your goal which is to allow your creative brain to connect. That good feeling you guys keep talking about when you're arting is literally one of the things that you're constantly, you should, you should be learning in art school, is how to maintain that space uninterrupted. They should be showing you that. They should also yeah. be showing you really good business techniques and how to file your taxes, but... That's opinions I have on art school. <laughs> opinions I have on art school. There are many. So I'm probably in this longer than I really needed oh, to no, be. Because you guys okay. probably already have the point. I'm going to arc a well, little. Well, Sandra was asking if, are you, you know, she's a first timer here. She's from Mississippi. Hi! Hi. So, uh. Oh, my Southern almost came out there. <laughs> Are we going to, uh, so she asks, are we going to work on individual components of the face in the future, like like you did the ears? Because she'd like to see more, like well, the ears and nose it, it, and jawlines. If she's lines. a first timer here. Yeah. Ha okay. Or if first, or, I think like, just live. So just live. Just okay. Live. So like you saw that sketch earlier of just the nose. Yeah. Every single feature, facial feature in the art quest is going to be broken down into one of those uh, drilled down videos. Yeah, so we've got a lot of those that are already done, and yeah. some of them just, you know, we're yeah. waiting so, for time. Nose things, front, so. nose side, mouth front, mouth side, ear, hair, male face, just different things that you Chin. guys need to know. Yeah, just all of that is going to be broken down, eyebrows, eyelashes, places that you get easily stuck. Yeah. Right? Now, we're learning just a couple more things and then when we really get through that we can interchange those and really sort of look at features and we're going to talk about different things to change up and then when we get far enough in that we're going to get into things like gritting and um instead of painting um or drawing imaginatively mm -hmm. we're going to draw figuratively yeah so the belief face is an imaginative face it is a well-trained defined construct of developed skills right drawing figuratively is just looking at what you see and trying to draw that's so the difference between the, and i'll show you that the the old lady and this again is figurative and imaginative they're both super valid um sometimes in art it one is made to be like more valid than the other but that's crazy it's just what you do with it i've seen people take these imaginative faces and just be incredible 
mm -hmm. with them. And then, you know, it's just down to you. I still think that's neat. Yeah, Sharpening I, the I like this because this, this if you do like 10 of these, boy, you are going to let go of some stuff. Yeah. I like that scribbly scribbly. It looks like a fun way of like, you know, because you're scribbling, you can't do it wrong. Because you do get a little bit out of your own way. What are you going to do? Judge this line? <laughs> right. You have to take the piece in as a whole. Yeah. You can't subjectively drill down on some small bit. You have to look at it as a whole and say, how am I doing as a whole? That doesn't mean you're going to look at this and go, I love it. I love my art. I accept myself. That's still a long journey. <laughs> right. But it can help you on that road, right? And then you're going to be like, maybe like, oh, I'm starting to see how what's important in a face when we're talking about, you know, this type of work is the shadow. Where those dark values are, all the values that you have to kind of think about. Betty asks, John, do you paint or and draw with cinnamon? You know, I I feel like I do because I'm here every day with you guys. I I I, I just you sort know? of expect him to pick up a pencil one day and just be like, "I am now awesome." <laughs> <laughs> like you don't understand, guys. I draw stick figures. Um, I like I don't I don't your paint really. I paint cars and vehicles and he objects. He took a lot of art class with me in college I when we were dating. Sculpt. I like sculpting. I'm working with metal. But that's about it. Metal is really fun. It is fun to pour metal, man. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Molten hot metal. That is the most unnerving. Casting bronze is super unnerving. That's my favorite. I love casting bronze. Just like, it just, <laughs> it's so I feel alive. It's, it's very primal in the creation. So I'm just swooping up her hair. Right? So. I'm swooping up her hair. I'm finding everything. This is really just an extension of the belief face and how I find her values. Right? I'm looking to darken the value here and continue to build this value here. I have a lightness over the bridge of nose. Right? I have a shadow value here at the neck, which gives it shape. You can kind of see the eyes, this part of the eye being more in shadow. You know, I'm just creating a light source, which I'm saying is here, and shading the ball, mm -hmm. which is her face. And I'm not even that worried about it. You know, just trying to capture. And honestly, she takes on an energy at some point. She really does. Just a spirit of her own is captured inside there. It is. And so there's just a lot that you could say about her if you felt like you needed to I'm going to come down and say that there's more happening here but with very loose and open scribbles I'm opening the scribbles up because it implies a story beyond the page well it's so cool because so what I was doing there like see focus. see these ears yeah I was finding my ear just making sure my ears were lined up gotcha little trick travel across find my other ear they could be a little higher they're a little low but they would still hold glasses and that's really what you're trying to uh, achieve just trying to like give it a go I think we're there I like it so this is all there is to this tomorrow this will help you to do one of these if you want to do one of the drizzle painted faces which is going to be um i think on 11 by 14 because you it's really tough to do them smaller yeah um you can get string gel or tar gel um at your art store i think a lot of them carry them and even some of the big chains mm -hmm. um but i pulled it off with anything that will pull a long slavy stringy drip and I'll even have some more suggestions tomorrow for that, like how you might get to do it. But remember, you can just take a pen and have essentially the same experience. Yeah. Right? This is just about realizing that you can let go and be a little more out of control, but still get a result that's very artful. Yes. And my high recommendation is to do a few of these. 
you know, yeah. and work them from portraits because, you know, as you relax and release into them, you know, you can be a little more. Yeah. Like, whew, that was like minutes. Now, I don't want to. Minutes. Any, I don't want anyone to forget. We have a full material list mm -hmm. on the BAQ adventure pages. Yes. You know what that is. So if you, adventure pages. If you go out to theartsherpa.com forward slash BAQ, you can find the individual page for today. And it'll have specific information on it, on, on the scribble, on the scribble adventures and those things you can do. And there's a poll out there asking questions about the Big Art Quest on other things that you'd like to, to learn from our quests. And if so, you're having any stuff going on, we're having some stuff with Facebook sign-in. We're, we're, we're working on some integration. There was some, some, some wonkiness with that, but we think we've got it resolved uh, coming in the next patch tonight. So hopefully that'll be taken care of. You know, so tech. Tech. Not, we it's, don't have a YouTube you know, channel on tech for a reason. That's right. We're, a, <laughs> we're an art channel. <laughs> for a reason. Tech is our... You know, no spelling, no, no pronunciation, no, in, no English, man. Like yeah, we, no maths, no <laughs> none of that being taught here. Lots happening. Listen, really watch the YouTube channel. A bunch is happening. Yes, so much going on right so now. So we're really trying to bracket it from challenging to so easy. You're just like, I can take these Q-tips and paint a painting. <laughs> so that full bracket of enjoyment. Um, I can't wait to see your scribble faces. Listen, your only job on this is to not be hard on yourself and just go, it's a scribble, I can let it go. Yep. This is a let go exercise. Let go and let be in your own artist. Yeah. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. <laughs>